something is um, what we need to do. Um, uh, because we're walking on a graveyard, our people, as Ojibwe people, we offer tobacco to our grandfathers. We don't know if this is a military man or a child. But I'd like for each of you, if you put your cameras away. From 1891 to 1959, the United States government operated a boarding school for Native American children at a former military outpost on what is now the Spirit Lake Dakota Reservation in northeastern North Dakota. Thousands of children from tribes based in the Dakotas and Montana attended the Fort Totten Indian Industrial School, where teachers and administrators attempted to strip students of their culture, language, and family ties. In the school's early years, students endured staff brutality, rampant disease, and excessive manual workloads. Dozens of children died while attending Fort Totten, and some former students and their descendants believe there could be unmarked graves near the site of the old school. Reporters from the forum accompanied boarding school's researcher Denise Lajmadir and several employees of the historical site as they searched for possible grave sites in October of last year. Okay. Yeah, they, we thought they were buried over there, but um, yeah. Kyle said that that's too close to the school, it was too close to the barn, oh. that the kids would have been buried here. Consulting a photo from the 1980s, the scholars scanned the prairie terrain near the Fort Totten State Historic Site for small tan boulders that could mark a grave site, long hidden from view. Yeah, it looks like it's right there. Is that telephone pole still there? And there's a telephone pole right there, yeah. right next to the... <sighs> So it's just all in this area. <sighs> Lajma Deer for years has listened to tribal elders tell stories of the brutality they experienced while attending Native American boarding schools, including Fort Totten, where thousands of children were educated, among them her father and grandfather. And my dad said that some kids just died they, what, what we know now is failure to thrive. Yeah. They were lonesome. Yeah. And they weren't allowed to go home. Following last year's discovery of graves, likely belonging to children who attended Canadian boarding schools, the United States has begun to reckon with the idea that the remains of students could be buried in unmarked graves near former American boarding schools. No, it's not, no one's been interested in boarding schools until yeah. the last couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So no one's been interested in graves until the last couple of months. This is the boys' dorm. This is where my father and my grandfather were. So you're going places where tourists don't usually go. So we use the rails with these stairs that are small and narrow. We yeah. Them. I'll show you this side first. This is where we were knocking and she was knocked back. Fort Totten was by far the largest in the state and at its peak enrollment in the 1910s, one of the biggest on-reservation schools in the country. There were 400 soldiers that served here and there were just about the same amount of boarding school kids here too, 390, almost 400. Yeah, it was overcrowded though. The bunks were very close together. Oh, yeah, so here's the other stairs that go back down. Interviews and internal documents reveal Fort Totten was a school with a culture of systemic abuse and neglect. So if you read my book, there's a story about this dorm from my auntie, Marianne Cavanaugh. What happened to her here in this dorm? Wow. But no direct evidence has been found to suggest students who died at the school were buried on or near the property. A lot of the stories are not um, all sad. Some of them have some good stories to tell too. I like those gold ones. Maybe. You have to use them. You have to use <laughs> the school closed for good in 1959, and the federal government turned over the site to the state. <laughs> 